So on Joseph Smith's apologetic paper, it's not the Joseph Smith Mormon, May 1995, the authority for the Koran. And he writes, the Arabic word Koran is derived from the root Qur'an, which means to read or to recite. This was the command which the angel Gabriel supposedly asked Muhammad three times to do when he confronted him in July or August 610 CE. So I read that without the glasses. In the Hira cave, situated three miles northeast of Mecca. According to Muslims, the Quran is the final revelation from Allah. In Arabic, the Quran is also referred to as Al-Kitab, the book, Al-Furqan, the distinction, Al-Mas'haf, the scroll, and al dikar the warning, as well as other names. I hear people citing these names all the time when I talk to Muslims. It means nothing to me. I need evidence. Big word, E-V-I-D-E-N-C-E. -E. The Bible has a lot of things about it, too. It gives it evidence. We've looked at the plethora of evidence, the historicity of it, the authenticity of it, the uh, lack of, of uh, conflict within it. For those who like statistics, you may be interested to know that the Quran consists of 114 chapters, surahs, made up of 30 parts. The chapters, the surahs are weird. They, they, they're not organized by any particular historical idea or subject matter. But by size, made up of 30 parts, six, 66, 16 verses, 77, 9, 43 words, 33, 338, 606 letters. According to Islamic scholars, 86 of the surahs were revealed in Mecca, while 28 surahs were revealed at Medina. Yet as portions of some surahs were recited in both places, you will continue to find a few of the scholars still debating the origins for a number of them. The surahs vary in length and are known by a name or a title, which are taken from the general theme of that surah or a particular subject, person, or event mentioned in it. This theme may not necessarily appear at the beginning of the surah, however, each verse or portion of the surah is known as an ayah, which means miracle in Arabic. Muhammad claimed that the Quran was the sole, his sole miracle, though the Quran did not exist in its written form during his lifetime. That's strange. In fact, much of the controversy concerning the Quranology of the Quran can be blamed on the fact that he was not around to verify its final collation. But more than about that later. To begin with, let's start with the question of revelation. How does Islam understand this concept of revelation? How could their view on it be one of the reasons we don't see eye to eye concerning our two scriptures? By the way, I use the dictionary. I use how language, languages are uh, customary and utilized by the vocabulary established by the mass of people. You might not make up your own definitions. Goodbye, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to uh, go by what language says according to language, context, and logic in accordance with the traditions of the particular language you're talking about, in this case, 21st century American English. If the translation isn't any good, show me. Revelation from the Quran, of the Quran. Okay. This is how it came about, how it was revealed, and then it, how it came about to be written down. Islam, like Christianity, believes that God, Allah, but the Allah God, the God of the Quran, by the way, is not the God of the Bible. They're described quite differently. So some, and I had this argument, oh, we're all in the same God, there's only one God. Well, there's the God of the Bible, excludes all other gods, and there's the God of the Quran, which excludes all the gods. Both are described differently, therefore, logically speaking, we have to look for, here's that dirty word, evidence of the corroborative veracity of the God of the Bible versus the God of the Quran. Desire, so Christianity believes that God, Allah, desires to communicate with humanity. But unlike Christianity, Islam tells us that Allah is remote, so he must not reveal himself to humanity as a personal level. I had this kind of discussion with my friend in the hot tub at the Copley Price YMCA, and he said, oh, no, no, Allah is a friendly God. No, he didn't understand his own book. 
Unlike Christianity, Islam tells us that Allah is remote, so he must not reveal himself to humanity at a personal level. So I don't know where he gets his points. It is for that reason that Allah is forced to employ appointed prophets, who are known as Rasul, meaning the sent one. These prophets are mere humans and so finite, though they are given a special status and consequently protected by God, the, the God of the Bible, but the God of the uh, Quran, rather, not the God of the Bible. Because Allah is so transcendent and unapproachable, revelation in Islam is simply one way, from God to humanity via the prophets. While each prophet supposedly fulfilled his mission by producing a book, the final revelation, and therefore the most important, according to Muslims, is that given to the final prophet, to Muhammad, the Quran. The Quran, Muslims believe, is an exact word-for-word -word copy of God's final revelation, which are found on the original tablets that have always existed in heaven. Muslims point to Surah 85, 21-22, which says, Nay, this is a glorious Quran inscribed in a tablet preserved. Islamic scholars contend that this passage refers to the tablets which were never created. They believe that the Quran is an absolutely identical copy of the eternal heavenly book, even so far as the punctuation, titles, and divisions of chapters is concerned. Why modern translations still can't agree what those divisions are is evident when trying to refer to an ayah for comparison between one version and another. By the way, I had an argument with my fellow in the hot tub about that. He said there's only one version, and it's in Saudi Arabia. Go into any bookstore around the world, and you'll find more than one version of the Quran. Multiple, 10 or 20. According to Muslim traditions, these revelations were sent down, Tanzil or Nazil, Surah 1785, to the lowest of the seven heavens at the time of the month of Ramadan, during the night of powder, power or destiny. From there, it was revealed to Muhammad in installments. Let me correct the spelling here. As need arose via the angel Gabriel, Surah 2532. Consequently, every letter and every word is free from any human influence. Well, how come there's so many different versions then? Which gives the Quran an aura of authentic authority, even holiness, and must be revered as such. Like I said, just Google it. How many versions are there in the Quran? And you'll find multiple places where you can buy different versions. And they're not talking about translations in other languages. Translations into your Arabic as if this were the original. Left unsaid is the glaring irony that the claim for a Nazil revelation of the Quran comes from one source alone, the man to which it was supposedly revealed, Muhammad. There are no outside witnesses before or at the time who can corroborate Muhammad's testimony, nor are miracles provided to substantiate his claims. Unlike the Bible, 66 books corroborate one another perfectly. One source of manuscript evidences which have been copied down through the centuries with 99.95% corroboration the, the, the remaining uncorroborated parts can be easily reconciled with a few obvious error, errors or translations that were uh, erroneous. In, in scri inscriptions by the monks who would like to the editorialize or things like that, easily, easily uh, figured out. In fact, the evidence for the authority of God's revelation, which the Bible emphatically produces, are completely absent in the Quran, namely that the revelation of God must speak in the name of God, Yahweh, that the message must conform to revelation which has gone before, and that it must make predictions which are verifiable, which it has over and over again, rather perfectly, so far, not one error in prophesying, and that the revelation must be accompanied by signs and wonders in order to give it authority as having come from God. That's the Bible, because these are missing in the case of the Prophet Muhammad and of the Quran, for those of us who are Christians, it seems indeed that it is the Quran and not the Bible which turns out to be the most human of documents. Yet, Muslims continue to believe that the exact Arabic words which we find in the Quran are those that which exist eternally on the original stone tablets in heaven. What, does God have an eraser up there? This, according to them, makes the Quran the mother of books. 
Sarah 43.3. Muslims believe there is no other book or revelation which can compare. In fact, in both Sarahs 2.23 and 10.37-38, we find the challenge to present some other book of equal beauty, a challenge which we will deal with later. I've already done that in this study of this guy. He's wonderful, this, this guy has done his homework. This final revelation, according to Islam, Islam is transcendent, and consequently beyond the capacity for conjecture or criticism. Which this, what this means is that the Quran, which we possess today, is and has always been final and pure, which prohibits any possibility for verification or falsification of the text. You can't question it. Well, okay, fine. I'll go get my version of the Quran. You get, get go get yours, and we'll see how the differences are. And there are differences. Because Allah is revered, much as a master is to a slave, so his word is to be revered likewise. One does not question his pronouncements any more than one would question a master's pronouncements. But so go for the Bible. Properly interpreted, properly translated, we've got the evidence of good translations and marvelous manuscript evidence. Some, even in the first century, might be even original. And they're so close to one another, you can take one or the other. Once in a while, Christ Jesus instead of Jesus Christ, or a, 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 a word that can be spelled in several different ways, meaning the same word, just like we have in King James English, we have the modern translation of that same word in 21st century American English. There's no difference. We know what that is. I would rather uh, read a good translation in 21st century American English than the King James Version, because I don't particularly want to study King James English from the 16th century. So then what then are we to do with the problems which do exist in the Quran, which we've just brought to bear? If it is such a transcendent book as Muslims claim, then it should stand up to any criticism. Yet what are we to do with the many contradictions, the factual errors, and bizarre claims it makes. This is the claim of Allah. There aren't any claims that the Bible makes that are questionable because they bear up under history. Even the archaeological critics finally rescind after decades and decades of discoveries come by, come to the fore, and prove out everything the Bible says without one single contradiction. Furthermore, when we look more carefully at the text that we have in our possession today, which is supposedly that of Uthman's final codification of the Quran, compiled by Zaid ibn Thabit from a copy of Hassa's manuscript, we are puzzled by the differences between it and the four coexisting codices of Abdullah Masur, Abu Musa, and Ubay, all of which have deviations and deletions between them. Who was right? You got four choices. Another problem concerns its very pronouncements. Because of its seeming transcendency, we may not question its content. That's why they're so violent about it sometimes, at least vociferous, much of which, according to Muslim tradition, originates from the later Medinan period of Muhammad's life, the last ten years, and so consists of basic rules and regulations for social, economic, and political structures, many of which have been borrowed from existing legal traditions of the Byzantine and Persian cultures, leaving us with a 7th-9th century document, 7th and 9th century document, which has not been easily adapted into the 20th century. These cultural changes, which don't amount, amount to any doctrinal changes, are insisted upon. And that's why we have a lot of antiquated cultural things going on in, in some countries like Saudi Arabia. As Christians, this question is important. The Bible, by contrast, is not simply a book of rigid rules and regulations which takes a particular or historical context and absolutizes it for all ages and all peoples. Instead, we find in the Bible broad principles with which we can apply to each age and each culture, such as worship styles, music, dress, all of which can and are being contextualized in the variety of cultures which the church finds itself today. So we don't have antiquated cultures. And sometimes when you live in a hot climate, as, as opposed to a cold climate or a medium climate, the dresses can change. As a result, the Bible is much more adaptable and constructive for our societies. Is that right or wrong? Since we do not have a concept of Nazi revelation, 
We have no fear of delving into and trying to understand the context 